For years now, NASCAR has had some amazing crashes that have had the sport undergo some major changes. From the cars to the tracks and even to the speeds, NASCAR has changed dramatically since it was founded in 1948. This is a list of the biggest crashes that have changed the face of NASCAR to what it is today. Back in 1960, NASCAR had its biggest crash in history, involving 37 cars of the 68 cars in the track. The next year, in 1961, Johnny Beauchamp and Lee Petty both launched their cars over the retaining wall at Daytona, eventually ending Beauchamp's and Petty's driving careers. Since then, NASCAR has realized that its sport has become far more dangerous than they had thought. In the 1950s and 60s, Fireball Roberts was one of the most well-known NASCAR drivers around. However, in May of 1964, at Charlotte Motor Speedway, Ned Jarrett and Junior Johnson crashed and Roberts spun trying to avoid the accident. Roberts crashed into the inside wall and burst into flames. Roberts ended up dying six weeks later in Charlotte Hospital. Because of this accident, fire retardant safety gear would be essential, onboard fire extinguishing systems were improved, and steel fuel tanks were replaced with rubber fuel cells. One thing that is seen on NASCARs today are the window nets. Originally, NASCAR did not have window nets in the driver's seat window, but that all changed at Darlington in 1970. Richard Petty was driving his renowned Roadrunner when he lost control of his car and slammed the inside wall, flipping violently afterwards. Most thought that Petty had received fatal injury from the crash as they could see Petty's arms hanging out of the window. Turns out that Petty had only injured his shoulder, but his head had also hit the pavement of the track several times, which led NASCAR to install the safety net in the driver's window, which has been used in NASCAR ever since. Even now, drivers are told to lower their window nets after an accident to let safety personnel know that the driver is okay. At the end of the 1970s, NASCAR was finally able to be broadcasted on live network television to film the coverage of the 1979 Daytona 500. And boy, was it good timing. Kale makes the move. He's down very close to the grass. Down he tries to shut him off. Kale's in the grass. Kale loses it. He tries to pull it back. Down he's side by side. They make contact. Both head toward the wall. They hit the wall in turn number three. We'll have a new leader. On the final lap of the race, Donnie Allison and Kale Yarborough were battling for the lead when they crashed into each other and drifted down into the infield. Richard Petty, who was in third at the time, took the lead and ended up winning the race. But as Petty crossed the line, Allison and Yarborough started a fist fight in the infield. The viewers that were watching the race on television were blown away. Today, NASCAR is broadcasted to over 150 countries and fights on and off the track have been fan favorites ever since. In the 1980s, cars would be able to go well over 200 miles per hour at tracks such as Talladega and Daytona. That was accepted until 1987 when Bobby Allison blew a tire and crashed into the catch fence at over 200 miles per hour. Bobby Allison with a horrible crash here on the front stretch. It has torn out a complete section. Since then, NASCAR has introduced the restrictor plates to reduce speeds at both Daytona and Talladega. Also, NASCAR originally had no speed limit on the cars in pit road, which meant the cars would go as fast as they could to get the fastest time. This rule was used until an incident in 1990 when Ricky Rudd lost control of his car and crashed into Bill Elliott's pit box, crushing the pit crew member Mike Rich, killing him almost instantly. The following year in 1991, NASCAR introduced new speed limits on pit road to reduce pit road crashes. Seen on the tops of cars, people always notice the roof flaps and wonder why they even have them. Well, let's have Rusty Wallace show us. Pull, pull away a little bit. They're trying to oh. break it in. Trouble behind Rusty Wallace is turning over. Rusty Wallace, 20 feet in the air, spinning, crashing. Trigger is waving. Ernie Evans wins, and Rusty spins and gets airborne and flips wildly right at the start finish line. Very reminiscent of his accident. 
When Rusty Wallace crashed wildly twice in 1993 at Daytona and Talladega, NASCAR knew that something had to be done. So the following year in 1994, NASCAR introduced the roof flaps and helped reduce airborne crashes. Of course, we still see airborne crashes even today, but if the flaps weren't there, these sorts of crashes would be far more frequent. Now, as any NASCAR fan will know, Dale Earnhardt was one of the greatest drivers in all of NASCAR history. After his win at the Daytona 500 in 1998, his NASCAR career was complete. You clearly know where I'm going with this. At the Daytona 500 in 2001, Earnhardt was involved in a crash on the final lap with Ken Schrader in turn four. To most, it looked like a pretty minor accident, especially if you compare it to some of Earnhardt's other more serious crashes that he's had in the past. However, Earnhardt suffered a skull fracture in the accident, which ended up being the cause of his death. NASCAR and all its fans were shocked to hear that the Intimidator had died in what looked like such a minor accident. NASCAR knew that some serious changes had to be done. The head and neck support device became mandatory to all drivers, and the steel and foam energy reduction, or safer barriers, immediately replaced the hard concrete walls around the track. Several years later, in 2007, NASCAR introduced the car tomorrow, which is bigger and safer than any car before it. Now, some were pretty skeptical about the car, not thinking that it was as safe as it was claimed to be. But everything changed in 2008 during qualifying at Texas Motor Speedway. One could switch points. Whoa, 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 guys. Whoa, whoa. whoa. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. I have never seen anything like that in my life. He hit that wall a ton. Oh, my gosh. Michael McDowell loses control of his car and crashes into the wall at nearly 160 miles per hour, flipping wildly until he came to rest on all four tires. Most were thinking about what the injuries McDowell had obtained during the crash, but everyone was stunned when he got out of his car and walked away uninjured. With this crash in mind, it is now known that the car of tomorrow is the safest car to date. NASCAR has been around for over 60 years, and as we can tell, NASCAR has changed a great deal. With all the advancements to the rules, the cars, and the tracks, it's remarkable how much NASCAR has been altered from what it originally was from big crashes it's the big one it's what we've all been fearing this kind of racing is going to happen to photo finishes nascar will always be one of the favorites in motorsports 20 years of trying 20 years of frustration